Hello my ride on people. What a beautiful day in Georgia. It's mid-November. Well we got 67 degrees, we'll take that. We've got fairly quiet roads, beautiful blue skies, sunshine. Life is good. So what's been happening then? Well, my uh, Ducati Street Fighter has uh, recently been in for its first service and I've done some more farkling to it and uh, up to about a thousand miles on that now. And you will see uh, some separate videos on that uh, in terms of an update on the Ducati, but I'm on the trusty BMW GSA today. She's a big old girl, but we love her very much she's never lets me down and a great bike to ride this time of year with all the weather protection and the big tank range and the she's just a big easy which I really like it's all the leaf peepers out hi guys lots of bikes out today lovely day for a ride I love the way they all wave to you as they go past and you get the low hand wave here in England it's a nod of the head, other places it's a raised hand, here it's a, it's a low hand out and uh, it's, it's nice and friendly. So um, what else can I tell you, well Uncle Jerry, Mr Brooks, he's, uh, he's got itchy fingers to buy another bike, he's uh, hammered his GSA in the two, is it about two years he's had it now. I think he's done the best part 50,000 miles on it, so it ain't like, you know, exactly had time for the battery to run flat on it. And uh, he's got deposits down, he only wants, wants to uh, get one bike, but he's got deposits down on two bikes, and whichever comes in first he's going to take. One of them is the BMW R1250 GSA, exactly what he's got now, but it's the 2021 model in the bumblebee colours as he calls it, black and yellow and uh, I think it's the, the best colour scheme, it's the 40th anniversary colour scheme basically and uh, it's uh, been a little bit revised for next year, it's got uh, better inbuilt navigation and uh, slightly wider screen which is going on the RT I believe and uh, I think I think the GSA gets the wider screen, I'm not sure about that but I think it gets the, the updates and uh, so he's kind of, uh, he's already had two GSs and two GSAs, exactly the same as me actually and he's looking at a third GSA if that comes in. The other option he has is he has a deposit down for the Ducati Multistrada V4S, complete clean sheet and um, similar engine to what's in my Street Fighter or the Panigale V4 but big news this year as you've probably seen in the press uh, they are dropping sacrilege the Desmotronic valves and instead they're moving to traditional springs but the way in which they've worked the technology they are claiming a massive 36,000 miles or 60,000 kilometers between valve checks and that's you know, even if you do decent miles, that's every four years, right? It kind of needs to be, because there's a lot of labour in getting to those valves. I wouldn't be surprised if there's 10 hours labour in that service. But um, the minor service, if you like, has been moved to 9,000. And uh, in lieu of, um, you know, the long service intervals on the valves, and also the fact that that engine is... Uh, you know, detuned for want of a better expression. It doesn't make the 208 horsepower of the uh, the Street Fighter because that's one area where Desmo really helps when you're revving the bike really high and the Street Fighter revs to 15,000 revs. Yes, 15. Uh, and you don't need that so much on a Multistrada or a GSA, right? Uh, the Multistrada will still have 170 horsepower, but the really good thing is it will have uh, over even this, the 1250 GSA, it will have about extra 25% of torque in the mid-range, uh, typically in the kind of 40 to 70, 80 mile per hour 
range so that's very real world overtaking uh, power right and um, that will be really nice and of course it has some uh, nice USPs next year because it has the active cruise control meaning it will not only just have cruise control but it will adjust um, the distance between you and the car in front automatically and there's three settings for that depending on how close you want it to be or not now BMW have that on the RT next year not on the GSA but on the RT and um, Ducati have kind of trumped them though because theirs is also a rear facing radar and uh, with the rear it has little lights in the edges of the mirrors which light up just like they're doing your car for blind spot monitoring so that's super cool so you can see if somebody's approaching you very fast or you're on the motor freeway motorway and you're trying to do an overtake and you look over your shoulder you check your mirrors but then you see a light flashing it's just that extra uh, peace of mind so nice feature we're not sure it's going to be available on launch the hardware is already going to be in the bike but it may be um, uh, the dealer has to invoke it at a later date or maybe there's a cost involved in that because uh, the legislation or regulation may not yet be approved in the same way that uh, you know cameras instead of mirrors in some cars have not been approved like the e-tron was supposed to have uh, the cameras instead and tesla wants it as well so anyway uh cracking motor that it's significantly sh uh, lower smaller and height wise and shorter than the l-twin current l-twin of the Strada. slightly wider because v4 but it's a very compact unit and there's uh, nothing in it weight wise so uh, the whole bike looks kind of lower more compact and I think I think it's going to be absolutely brilliant actually as a road uh, adventure bike particularly next year I think that's going to be the one to be on um, so either way whichever comes through uh, Jerry's going to get it he loves his GSA they're both available today he'd get another GSA I'm sure he's a real um, GSA fanboy and uh, who can blame you but uh, in some ways I'd kind of love to see him get the Ducati you know if it came in first uh, just because I'd like some real world uh, owner feedback on them because when my time comes I'll probably be in the same boat it will be the Multistrada or the GSA and it'll be interesting to see who gets uh, gets my money basically but loving the V4 in the Street Fighter it's it's just epic it's a classic and uh, I can't believe how much Ducati have come on in recent years in their build quality reliability and overall performance and, uh, and features it's that they really have stepped up to the mark greatly which is lovely to see you know so uh, just for reference if you want to know I'm on the beautiful uh, route 60 uh, just south of uh, Suches in Georgia heading down to an area we call Black Mountain or Stone Stone Gap uh, basically and through to Black Mountain and uh, uh, it's all like this so if you don't live near roads like this I'm, I'm so sorry <laughs> but it's lovely it really is and uh, we just uh, we are so spoilt here I mean look at the views they go on for days and uh, still loving our riding still riding every weekend we can and uh, I've got uh, several guys with me today I've got Jerry I've got Charlie I've got uh, Bill I've got Ted and I've got Paul so we've got uh, we've got three GSAs a GS uh, and two Multistradas so quite a, quite a by coincidence quite the BMW Ducati sandwich today and uh, I guess uh, the sort of guys I ride with and on the sort of topography we do the sort of bikes uh, all round the bikes that BMW and Ducati make uh, just kind of really suit what we do you know typically go out and do uh, you know 200 250 miles uh, most weekends on a, on a Saturday typically and uh, 
really a big adventure bike is ideal for that although I have found the Street Fighter incredibly comfortable and doing big miles is no problem but the other day I did the Cherahala Skyway and did 366 miles in that day and it was perfectly fine the problem we had or I had <laughs> It's just tank range on that thing, it's not the best and that goes with the nature of the bike Really you've got to be filling up every hundred miles realistically And uh, you know the low fuel light is going to come on at about 85 miles so It ain't that great But you know it's a small price to pay for uh, a sublime riding experience It's a bit like, you know if you've ever done any of those experiences where you hire a Ferrari and go around the track and do two or three laps or something in the Ferrari and it's like chalk and cheese compared with your road car right it's like that every time you ride the uh, the Street Fighter it's epic it's uh you know it's like it's kind of like when I had my Porsche actually when you kind of feel like every time you get in it it's an event you know it's not just a journey it's not just transport it's something that you smile just staring at you know ranch in the mountains But, you know, whatever you ride, if it's got two wheels, it's good with me, and I love riding everything. I could be on a 20-year-old, you know, Honda Super Cub now, and I'd still be loving it. What's not to love? Look at, look at the mountainous views, the sunshine, the empty roads, and it really doesn't matter what bike you're on. You'd just love it, wouldn't you? Just being out here right now. Just flick flacking through the bends and uh, just having a thoroughly lovely day with your mates. It's it's cool. What doesn't come out on the camera is how steep some of these hills are. They're really uphill and down dale is uh, you'd say in Yorkshire in England or something. Y'all come back now. Woo. Bit of a blind crest. But yeah, gotta love it. So life is good and uh, you know in terms of Covid we're doing very well here in Georgia, far better than uh, my homeland back in the UK and other places uh, all year consistently from March through to November no matter how many people we tested and we tested about 30,000 in March and it's about three and a half million now. Uh, irrelevant how many people we test we always find that 10% uh, almost exactly uh, actually are infected so that's the uh, that's that rate and of the 10% sorry I had to cut there um, so yeah uh, of the uh, between March and November uh, of all the people we tested something like 3.6 million now we find that uh, get the navigation back up we find that um, 10% of people are infected and of that 10% who are physically infected we have a mortality rate of 2% so that's about twice as infectious as flu and just slightly higher on mortality rate wise but essentially uh, you know it really makes uh, no difference how many people we test the numbers percentage wise uh, are you know uniform 10% infected and 2% uh, mortality with that infection rate it's actually really quite low when you look at other infectious diseases but you know we're all being sensible today we're social distancing we're all wearing our masks and uh, we're all staying out in the fresh air and uh, we've all been uh, thankfully um, Covid free all year and uh, all of our families too so uh, that's not bad and uh, in terms of my employment I've been working from home since February and I've just been told that will continue to at least April next year which I don't mind I find it less stressful working at home I'm just as productive uh, probably more so actually I'll probably work a few extra hours and uh, it's no bad thing living your life in PJs. What 
delightful little back road this is one well, until you meet a half ton f-150 <laughs> coming the opposite way you get out on these back roads you find these beautiful little farms little homesteads with miniature horses and cattle and all sorts but you also get some of these bumpy gravelly road sections and that's when the adventure bikes come into their own it really doesn't matter if you come around the bend and the road runs out uh, when you're on one of these things such a, a lovely day today we've been doing these kind of back road lanes all day all over the place it's just been a complete joy we went to a beautiful little uh, coffee stop this morning and had uh, some barrel aged coffee some coffee aged in uh, bourbon barrels totally non-alcoholic but um, you get the flavour you know and it's not too much like if you put a bourbon or whiskey and coffee it can be a bit overpowering this isn't this is quite a subtle smoky bourbon flavor um, but it's not too strong taste wise and as I say zero alcohol so there's a little uh, shop out in a place called Ball Ground we like to go to called Barrel House Coffee and uh, we stopped there this morning for a, a cuppa then we stopped in Aska down by the uh, riverside around lunchtime, took in the views. And now we're starting to head south and back towards uh, Atlanta and surrounding areas. Apologies if there's a lot of wind noise, it's very breezy today. I'm actually wearing my Climb uh, Crash Helmet Carbon. TKC 1200 I think is the reference I usually wear my Shoei uh, Neotech 2 but I thought I'd give this a go today and uh, one of the things I really love about this climb helmet is it's got a transition uh, shield lens and it just works superbly it's I don't know how they do it but they've they've got the magic formula right they there's zero glare but otherwise you think you're wearing a clear visor it just looks you know, crystal clear to you yet when you look in your bike's mirrors it's absolutely jet black it's really uh, I don't know where I can try and get a picture of that there's a big bump here I think somewhere oh. maybe they filled it in see black see black but what I'm seeing is as clear as a car windscreen, just without the glare. It's absolutely awesome. And it's very, very light, which I like, but it's tight fitting on my ears, so I can't wear earplugs today. And that's annoying because it makes the intercom when I've got it on talking to the guys a bit too loud. So, yeah, a bit annoying, but anyway. So, really, that's the uh, just a little, I thought I'd just do a little vlog today. It's, been too long since I've done one on the GSA riding along everything's cooking on gas GSA's done 15,000 miles now zero problems and uh, still loving it probably uh, have a service and fresh tires at 18 and the valves done but sounds really sweet and it's uh, going perfectly so no problems to report and uh, I suppose I should round off by saying, uh, you know, the COVID situation may be different where you live and you must take whatever precautions you think are fit and appropriate. Uh, but I hope that, like us, you're able to get out, get some fresh air, social distance and enjoy your motorcycles. So I'll leave by saying, uh, you know, hope you and your family are well. And uh, But if you can get out, then ride often ride carefully, ride on. Hey you, if you want to become one of the ride on people, don't forget to subscribe. Ride often, 
write carefully, write out.